Hamptons to our home. We're the Hamptons. We are so delighted to have an op another opportunity to come to you and just uh, talk about marriage yes. and family mm -hmm. because it's so important that we maintain teachings. Yes. Today I want to talk about um, evangelism. Yes. And the role of the family mm -hmm. for evangelism. Yes. Amen. But before we begin with this topic, let us join hands and pray. Mm -hmm. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this of the day that you have made. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to come and just share mm -hmm. with your people mm -hmm. about marriage and family. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God, for this awesome, mm -hmm. awesome privilege. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God, for placing us here in time to be able to share yes. with all the wisdom that we have these 50 plus years and the revelation that you are continuing to uh, input into us and to share with your people. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your goodness. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this opportunity mm -hmm. that the words of our mouths yes. and the meditations of our heart mm -hmm. be acceptable in thy sight. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank amen. you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we are just so excited to be able to start a new year off with just something that God has put in our heart that I just know is close to his heart, Curtis. I was just walking around in my early morning prayer a few weeks ago, and the Lord just spoke to me about, you know, the real true purpose of my church is evangelism. Mm -hmm. To uh, And I'm looking at the darkness of the world. I'm looking at the coldness. We're looking at so much that is, is happening so fast. And, I'm, you know, I'm like, Lord, I just want this year, I just don't want to miss it. You know, time is going by fast, and, you know, we're getting older, and I believe that God has us here on this earth for a purpose. And if we don't fulfill our purpose and our role, honestly, I say, well, you know, why, why would he even, you know, keep us here? And I just... Um, you hear about all the things that are going on, and like I said, the world's getting so dark. So I said, Lord, we don't want to just be doing something just to be doing it. We just don't want to be doing something that's a good thing. We want to be doing something that's a God thing. But most of all, we want to be fulfilling, you know, His purpose for us being here. Mm -hmm. And so He dropped in my spirit very clearly, you know, I just called you to reach the world for me. You have it. The problem is not that the world is so dark. The problem is that my people are not shining the light. When you go in a dark room, you don't curse the darkness and say, oh, why is it so dark? Oh, you know, I hate this darkness. No, you turn on the light. And so I, I just feel like the Lord said, I need you all to light up my world and, and really share with you that we're just not doing this because it's something to do or something nice to do or to fill up time. Because we have people in our lives. We have family. We have people all around us that we try to encourage and that and the needs are so great things that you and I want to do. So, um, but I said, hey, Lord, so how do we incorporate marriage and family? I know it's on your heart. And he just said very clearly, he said, the best tool for evangelists in this season that we're in is marriage and family. That is an evangelistic tool. Yes. And I got to think about that, Curtis, and I'm thinking, you know, almost everywhere we go, when we tell people we've been married 50 plus years, you know, and, and we automatically got people's attention, you know, whether they're saved or unsaved, well, religion, or race or whatever it is, they want to know. They want to know. And so we have the answer. And you can't say I've been married for 50 plus years to my best friend, you know, and we still in love with each other. We go on dates, you know, and, uh, and, and, and without bringing in Jesus. We That's have right. to let them know that, listen, it's not because we're good people. It's not because we're church people. It's not because, you know, we we'll just come from great families where there was a history of good marriages. We didn't have that. So what better way? We have an audience, you know, they want to know. So this has been our best evangelistic tool to win people to Christ. It really has when we open up and share about our life and our marriage. Actually, that's how our church got started. That's right. Through just talking about our marriage, marriage and relationships. And, and that was a, a mm -hmm. evangelistic uh, tool for us. It was. A way for us. Mm -hmm. And so today we want to uh, talk about uh, the home mm -hmm. and how uh, our relationships at home reflect mm -hmm. and bring it in Christ bringing in uh, the light to a darkened world. Yes. And we always go back to 
Genesis, mm -hmm. when the family uh, was instituted and God uh, laid the foundation with the marriage, mm -hmm. and it says, be fruitful and multiply. Well, as a Christian home, we ought to, to model Jesus. That's right. And a Christian home is where biblical principles yes. are taught. Yes. It is in the home that, that, that we are to uh, be diligent mm -hmm. and to teach our children. Yes. You know, being diligent. And so a question I have to ask today is, um, again, how important is the home and the family for world evangelism? Now, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, mm -hmm. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. We also have in Matthew chapter 28, mm -hmm. where Jesus, where we were first, first I first got our first Bible study, mm -hmm. we came to the church, the pastor always said that, you know, we have that divine goal, mm -hmm. that Jesus said, go ye, go ye. to the world. Mm -hmm. Well, the first uh, foundation, the first place to start, mm -hmm. is the home. Yes. So, the question I want to ask you today, what are some of the examples that we can do this? Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, like you just said, I mean, you know, the home is the model, you know, the foundation that, that God set for not only to, um, to equip us for evangelism. Mm -hmm. See, the home and the family started with the husband and wife, you know, um, it, it, it's the model. And see, how people know us is by how they know Jesus, first of all, I don't. I think you have to earn the right to be heard. When you go out to witness, we were taught early on in, in the church we were in to go out and witness, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. knock on doors, pass out flyers, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things. Well, I wasn't really comfortable doing that. I didn't really feel, feel like that was the best way for me to evangelize. I, I wanted to evangelize, but I wasn't comfortable with going door to door passing out flyers. And uh, so, but I felt like the Lord was showing me that uh, witnessing is being a witness by your character, by your attitude. And so the practice for that is in the home with you mm -hmm. and the children. Right. And so that's what he showed me. He said, your best witness to, for people to want to know me is for you all to, you have what we call the home court advantage through the home. And I think that's what God gives us uh, for a model for the world is because it represents Jesus to his church. For instance, uh, if you are, say, you're a father and a husband, mm -hmm. so when your children or when I or any of us, you're the head of our household, you're the priest of our household, and so when we, when the children go to school or we're out in the marketplace, say, you, you know, at a restaurant or the children at school at the playground or whatever in the classroom, so the interaction that the children have with the people that they are uh, relating to, you know, at school or say on, on the job in the marketplace, the, the, the way we react to people there mm -hmm. um, is a reflection of you. And so what I found, I think most people will, if you will say, you know, well, um, I think I know what your parents or what your husband or your father is like by watching your behavior, watching the way you respond. You know, and so I think that the home court advantage to be able to model out, you know, to sh we're, do we're to showcase what it's like out there, but it starts in the home with the, with the character. So basically, our children would say we felt like we knew what you all were like by looking at your children. That's right. Like the old folks <laughs> would say, well, you raise right. You know, they say, you, you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, young person, who, who taught you this? How'd you, mm -hmm. how'd you know this? Mm -hmm. Oh. Absolutely, and I uh, think of one reminder of one situation where one of our children was in a job situation where they uh, had to handle a situation that was a conflict within the company, and there were people who really could have gotten hurt, but one of our children stood up and took a stand against the uh, what was going on and the behavior of the person and, and, and began to actually mentor this person when they were able to calm them down to get them to think differently. And so the person was a challenge for a good while on the job, but 
later on before the person was finally terminated, they said to, to our child, said, listen, I don't know who raised you to think the way you do, but it, it, I see your life is different, and I wish that I had been taught to think that way. And so that was a real eye-opener to us, because sometimes you don't always know that they're carrying out your values and principles. Well, where did that come from? And now they're in positions where they have to manage people, and so we talk about this, and they talk about the lack of character, and the hard is to get people who have good work ethic. Good work, that work ethic is being a person that's honest, a person that's loyal, a person that's going to be on time, doing what nobody else wants to do, mm -hmm. come early, stay late. Those are qualities, and I told them, and they've come to the conclusion, it's the home. I said, y'all, it's the home. How were they raised? What were they taught? So there again, the reflection of Jeanette and Curtis is what they see our children do. Now, they don't always do what you do, but when it comes to the, 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 uh, the, 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 the core values mm -hmm. and what you value and what you honor and what you respect, in that world, in the marketplace, in the community, it comes from what you have seen and heard in your home. So, it's very, it's not hard to evangelize someone to get their heart to listen to you when they have seen the qualities of Christ in you. That's right. So once you see the kindness, you see that these, you know, some, you know, this person is. Is, is, is doing something nice for me when I've been so wrong to them. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they don't sit around and gossip and, and complain about what in the world is going on, but they always have a, a kind demeanor. And, and so this is a reflection of the, the character of our Heavenly Father, but it has to be first in you, Curtis. The children don't necessarily do what you say, but you've heard us say before, but they do, do what, what you, you do. do. And yes. so people will, they will know a little bit about you or they'll have a, an interest in you. They'll have um, a curiosity about you in terms of someone that, man, they've done something good with, with these children. And so that's the same thing when we go to what is for our Heavenly Father and to, for people to want to be saved. So what is it with you? I don't get you. What is it? What is it that make you all have such respect for yes. people? Yes. Show kindness when you've been treated unkind, you know, and, 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 and what is it? So then, hey, that's an open door for to share our faith. So I think it's a wonderful tool for evangelism. I mean, really, your, your marriage and your family, people are watching. They're watching. They are what want to see. Yes, and I think that sometimes as we see Christians, you know, you have the bumper stickers and mm -hmm. you have the sign of the dub, all these things, you know, on your desk or on your car or you have the, the, the you know, cross chain around your neck and mm -hmm. you, you have all of this and you may have a, you know, on your desk you have a big, thick Bible, but then they're watching your character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're watching how we react or don't react. Mm -hmm. All good. of this you know, we are being that, that living epistle mm, that's good. that being read. Mm -hmm. So I've come to understand in my work history, a lot of times I didn't go on a job quoting scripture, although they knew I was a Christian, long before I even said a word. Right. And so, you know, people are watching you and there's a, a level of respect. Yes. They may not understand it, you know, they're around telling just crazy jokes or trying to get in and try to get into that and you don't want to be a part of that. Right. You don't want to be a snob, but at the same time, you know, there's a level of respect yes. that people will, will regard, mm -hmm. you know, coming your way. Mm -hmm. And I think that too often, sometimes I kind of, when people want to get in about the debating, especially with other Christians, mm -hmm. I think the, the most I would say harmful thing that I've seen on a job is fellow Christians want to get in a debate about scripture. Right. And then you got the you got the world watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they said, Well, you all don't seem like y'all on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So I have been able to gain a witness for people on the job mm -hmm. by just my character, mm -hmm. my way of speech, mm -hmm. like I said, being on time, doing a doing a good job. And in conversation, mm -hmm. We talk about Christ. Mm -hmm.
Yes. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about the things of God. Right. You know, we mm -hmm. we say um, grace at the table. We got to the point to where uh, we come together. They said, "Well, how about you pray? Mm -hmm. You know, how about how about how about you, mm -hmm. you pray? Let's 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 just do that." Mm -hmm. And so, where did it start at home? That's right, at home. It, it started, as you say, that home court advantage. Mm -hmm. And so, we're That's talking right. about the home mm -hmm. and its impact mm -hmm. on world evangelism. That's right. The home, mm -hmm. <laughs> the job, mm -hmm. the school. Yeah. You know, in the supermarket, mm -hmm. yeah, everywhere we go, everywhere you go, that's right. And, and we are to reflect yeah. Christ. Reflect and that everywhere. is that is e e evangelism. Yes, it is. Just, just going on representing Christ. Representing Christ, and I get, and I mean, we people will ask questions. They will want to, know. and now more than ever, I think this is an opportune time for us as Christians to really be excited and encouraged. Because we have an opportunity like never before. Because we have the answers. We really do have the answers. But they are. But people are really getting tired of Christians just talking about. Uh, I think they're kind of burned out with hearing all the, what God will do for you if you get saved. Now, that's just old, and it really is not biblical. Yes, He will do a lot for you. But what He's already done for us is far more important than anything that He will ever do for us in terms of getting what we want. So I think the popularity of the seeker friendly churches or the name it claim it uh, group that says, you know, that, you know, if you just come to Jesus, you'll get everything you want. And if you just get in the word and speak the word and confess the word, then you can have what you say. Well, no, we do believe that you should confess. Yes. And we do believe that there are many, many rewards and benefits that you and I have gotten. I mean, from just serving God, being faithful to people and serving people. We know that there are benefits and many rewards because God promises that. Well, how about the reward of your children? See, God says that children are a reward. Children are a reward. That's a reward, right? That is a huge reward, you know. And, and having a covenant to make, having an opportunity to shape, uh, shape a, a, a community, to shape a family. To eat. The churches are built off of families. How are we going to have strong churches? I don't think you can have strong churches without strong families. And the family is the number one topic now, y'all. We have a great opportunity because everybody is trying. It's talking about marriage, right? Everybody's talking about marriage. The to marry, not to marry. Uh, respect of marriage, disrespect of marriage. Everyone is talking about marriage. But what they're looking for is a covenant way to connect. And so they're redefining and redefining it in different ways and alternatives to the traditional marriage because the heart of every man and woman is to want to belong and to connect and to have a relationship because it really is the God part of you. God put that in you to want to connect and covenant with another human being. And so this is all that's about. So you need to take advantage of the fact that they are looking, they do want marriage, but because traditional marriage the way God intended does not seem to be fruitful in the church, y'all. That's why this is so important. This is tied to your faith. This is tied to evangelism and building the kingdom of God. It is upon, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. How is he going to build his church except families? Family. There has to be the order. That's right. The home has the order. That's right. And I, and I think that everybody, like you say, the world is trying to redefine it because the church we're not doing, I would say, we're, we're, we're really being unfaithful in terms of, of promoting and representing. That's right. We're not representing Christ in our marriages. We're not representing Christ through our families. Yes. And so the world said, okay, if you all are not 100% mm -hmm. of what you believe, then mm -hmm. we're going to try something else. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's time that we recalibrate and, and refocus mm -hmm. and bring you know, things back yes. to, the, to, the, to the correct order Amen. that God intended it to be. Yeah. And that we, everywhere we go, mm -hmm. we talk about our family. Everywhere we go, we talk about our marriage. And people want to have an ear to listen. They do. They want to, they, they, they can feel our passion. They can feel our mm -hmm. conviction. Mm -hmm. And they want to turn and mm -hmm. see. Now, Pastor, you say years ago, that I was affiliated with, he said, is a poor frog that won't croak, you know, of his own pond. Yes. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. if you're not excited mm -hmm. about what you have, yes. then how am I going to go get excited about it? That's right. And so I think that with that same passion, mm -hmm. that same drive, mm -hmm. we need to put it 
and family. But yes. it starts at home. It starts, it starts with our children. Right. It starts with the family. That's exactly right. As I look back over our 52 years this year of marriage, uh, all it was, I mean, we were uh, two kids from the project, broken homes. But we so, but, but what we wanted to do was do it God's way. And fortunately, back then it was modeled out around us, where it's not now. But all it was with Jeanette and Curtis, nothing special about us. Trust me, nothing special about us. We didn't come from the ideal families where marriage was celebrated and there was a, a firm foundation, you know, of, of, of the, you know, the, the support and the security of the family. No, our foundation was shaken at early ages. Uh, and it wasn't, as I've said before, even, uh, it was not popular at all to be the child or the product of a broken home. Uh, to have parents who were divorced or separated. Actually, I felt like a second-class citizen in school because almost everyone had mom and dad in the home. We did not. And, and your family was, was, was split up too. You know, your parents divorced and then your grandparents raised you. But look at God, y'all. This one love about the Bible and redemption and salvation. This is a wonderful story to share for evangelism. God took a little broken girl from the project, a little broken boy from the project, brought us together, and guess what we did? We reversed that curse, and we decided that we wanted to do things God's way and have a family God's way. And 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 two. So all you need is one male, one female who loves God and believes God and wants to do it God's way. And then he can work with that, and he did, to build a home. It's just a, a boy and a girl, a man or a woman, who love the Lord and love each other. That's right. And who made a decision, we want to do it God's way. And guess what? God kicked in that grace, and here we are 52 years later. And he can do it for you and anyone else. But you see how it started? We made a decision. See, when you make a decision that you want to do things God's way, and that's really all it is, it's the only secret to marriage. Marriage is really not hard, okay? It is not hard. You just, the hard part is making a decision that you want to do it God's way. You want to make the Bible, the Word of God, the foundation, the final authority for your relationship and your home. And God will give you the grace. I can't say it enough. God keeps putting this in my heart. Mm -hmm. If you make the commitment and you're serious and you really believe that this is God's plan. He is for you. He is for your family. He is for your marriage to be re, uh, re, reignited if you need it renewed. Some of you, you need it resurrected because it was good, but it looks like you've drifted away. And so the teaching, and there's so much material out here, so much on marriage, and, and God is, and he, he can do it, but you know, on purpose. You have to want to get in God's Word, get mentors, get involved in marriage education. There's a lot of, of good material out there, mm -hmm. uh, good people and conferences that you can attend and mm -hmm. materials and all kinds of good speakers out there who are teaching about marriage and family, who, uh, who have, uh, oh, they've been divorced. We've got couples who were, we mentor who they were divorced, y'all, and they remarried. And uh, hopefully we'll have some of them on this year to talk about that. God can do anything yes. when you decide to do it His way. But first of all, you got to get saved. And you got to want to do it God's way. So that's why evangelism is what God has called us to do. But it, is, it starts in our home and with the character that we build within the context of family. That's, that's right. And I, and, and I will want to also share with this because you're watching this and... You know, you, you're not married. You, you know what? I'm a single mom. I got my children. Bless your heart. Amen. We say bless your heart. Yes. Because yes. you too mm -hmm. have an opportunity mm -hmm. to change the trajectory mm -hmm. of your children. That's right. Get in the word, mm -hmm. prayer. Also, your family, your children can also be representatives of, of Christ. That's right. And so you have an awesome responsibility mm -hmm. as your heavenly father. That's right. Amen. Then directing mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. also to train them up That's right. in the way that you go. That's right. And so we have a man that we talk about the Christian home, we talk about the Christian family. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to condemn anybody. We also, we love you. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to reach you also. That's right. Because we, I know we live in a world now 
you know, people say, well, that was 50 years ago, and da-da-da, this mm -hmm. and that. Yes, we understand, but God's standard Don't change. Does, doesn't change. That's right. It's still, it's still the same. It's still the same. Yes. And just to plug in for the single moms, I was raised by a single mom. Okay. <laughs> My parents divorced. I was four years old. So I was pretty much raised in a home of a single mom. And you all know, if you know anything about her or us, she was a wonderful matriarch. Yes. That taught me everything about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taught me to love him with all my heart. So she was evangelizing in her home, okay? That's right. So yeah, you need to be evangelizing in your home. You, you have a wonderful opportunity to show those children. But she was never bitter or angry uh, or in unbelief that marriage was not valuable in what she wanted. She wanted to be married. She honored marriage in her conversation with us. She honored marriage in her prayers that God would give us good mates and give us good marriages. And my sister and I both have been married over 50 years to a single mom who raised us. So that is no excuse. You can put the values of marriage and family and home in your children as a single mom and break that curse of generation or whatever it is, the reason why, May, uh, whatever's in your family line or in your uh, families where some of them, you know, it's just divorced all the way through or a, a single mom or whatever got married. You have families like that. But what we don't want to do is say that we don't need to be married. We don't, you know, we don't, right. we want to, we do not want to embrace, Christians should not embrace this, well, you, you don't need a man, you don't need to be married. You know, men have value. They have a place in the head of the household. However, if you are single and you do not feel a call to get married and you want to be married to Jesus and his church or you have a call to do something else that is just as honorable and you still have an opportunity to, to impart the principles and support marriage around you That's because right. it's the family, the family uh, way he sets it up. But marriage does not, to not get married is not a sin. I want to make sure we're clear on that. Right. And marriage is not for everybody. Marriage is not for everyone. But for most people who desire marriage and they want that family foundation, you better make sure that God has called you to marriage and to that person. And that you've heard him that this is the way for you to walk. Hey, this is the way. Walk, walk you there in it. <laughs> you make sure you heard that from God, okay? Because if you didn't, you are going to have a disaster and you're going to start a racial curse because you buried the wrong person out of the will and time of God, okay? Maybe that's not what he wanted you to do. So don't think that you, you know, so we don't want to ever make anyone think that uh, you just have to be married in order to um, be an evan you know, to evangelize the world or to uh, be able to uh, have God in your life and to start a generational blessing. No, 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 we're not saying that. But what you must do, what God requires of you as a Christian is to honor what he says about marriage. Right. Because you can evangelize your married friends if you're single. When they come running to you telling you, well, I wish I was like you, girl, you got it going on because you're single. You got to worry about no husband, no kids. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you know, they did it. So, girl, well, I wish I was you. You know, now the singles will be married and married won't be single. I mean, it's crazy where we are now. So, as a born again Christian, though, one who loves the Lord and His Word, you have responsibility to say, listen, I have not been called to marriage, and I am fine and good, and I am married to Jesus. So, I've got more time than you two to give myself to the Lord. I've got more time to serve in the community. I have more time to be with Jesus because I don't have to, because I'm single. That is my gift and I embrace it and I love it. However, you are married and you need to look at God's word and the blessing that God says that marriage has and support that. Yes. And share with your single friends or your married friends if you're single that you need to, you get scriptures you learn what we're talking about and you share with them i've seen it happen you can be a powerful witness that's right for the lord and as a as an evangelist that's right so yeah you're god knows doesn't he yes what we're supposed to be what doing we're supposed to be doing so thank you for tuning in yes until the next time we will have further teaching on this so let's go out and evangelize amen married couples we have a mandate. Mm -hmm. We have, have, have that 
divine goal. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. starts at home, the training of our children, mm -hmm. around the, the dinner table, mm -hmm. having prayer, having fellowship. And so I used to always say that we work, what, from the outside in. In, inside out. Inside out. From the inside out. Right. Like the home. Right. Work inside out. Out into the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great is he that is in us mm -hmm. than he is in the world. Yes. So it's from the inside out. Yes. So Amen. let's pray. Amen. Father God in heaven, mm -hmm. we thank you for thank you, Lord. this opportunity mm -hmm. to share with those viewing mm -hmm. about marriage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the, giving them the tools mm -hmm. that they need to go out, mm -hmm. Father God, mm -hmm. in their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to evangelize the world, to represent you, to be mm -hmm. your ambassadors Ambassador. of Christ. Yes. Ambassadors to represent marriage. Mm -hmm. Ambassadors who represents the family. Mm -hmm. Because the world mm -hmm. is looking mm -hmm. for that which is real, mm -hmm. for that which is authentic. Mm -hmm. God, we know that we have it. Mm -hmm. We know that we have the answer. Mm -hmm. We know that we are the light. Mm -hmm to go out mm -hmm. into a darkened world. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that thank we are the salt. Mm -hmm. And we thank you and we praise mm -hmm. you. Thank you. In Lord. Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. Until the next time, mm -hmm. God, bless you. God bless you. We love you. We love you.